I'm Eric Fetzer. I'm an atmospheric scientist at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Most of my work is done with the AIRS Atmospheric Infrared Sounder Instrument. Um, my interests are in climate and what we call climate processes, how the climate itself works. The ENSO, actually, is interesting, interesting etymology to the word ENSO. ENSO actually is a span Spanglish word. ENSO, the E-N is El Nino, the S-O is Southern Oscillation, so it's a merged English-Spanish word. El Nino comes from uh, an observation made many, actually centuries ago by Peruvian fishermen that there was often a change in local climate around the time of Christmas, around Christmas time. So Enzo refer, refers to the child, the Christ child. So it was a coincidental that Enzo events or El Nino events often begin around Christmas. Southern Oscillation is a term coined in the 1920s by English climatologists and it refers to an observation they made of pressure differences between essentially to heat, well, between Tahiti and in the Central Pacific Ocean and, and Darwin in Northern Australia. And over time it was realized that these, ends, these El Nino events, these changes in climate in Peru were correlated or, or coincident with the Southern Oscillation events that were identified in another data set. The Southern Oscillation refers to, refers to large scale changes in the climate in the tropical Pacific mostly, but not exclusively. Uh, that, that the characteristics of that, those changes are off Peru, the ocean, which is normally quite cold, as cold as, even though Peru's on the equator, the ocean is, there is about as cold as Southern California, so it gets, it ranges between 50 Fahrenheit to maybe 70 Fahrenheit. During an El Nino event, that temperature can climb dramatically, uh, the ocean temperature can. That causes widespread disruption, uh, and fishermen notice that their anchovy catch, which is a foundation of the Peruvian economy, economy for many centuries, the anchovy catch would collapse. Um, so that's one local idea of what's going on with ENSO off Peru. Meanwhile, in the western Pacific Ocean, so areas near Australia and New Guinea, uh, there's always deep thunderstorms. It's one of the most active thunderstorm regions on the planet. Um, those, the so-called deep convective centers in the, trop the tropical western Pacific Ocean actually move to the east during El, during El Nino events. Um, they can in fact move so far east that they actually lead to rainfall in parts of South America which normally are very dry, Peru being a good example. So during an El Nino event, Peru, which has a climate somewhat like Southern California, often cool, rarely very hot, rarely very hum humid and tropical, will that be Peru then becomes very tropical during an El Nino event, um, and that that effect included that uh, that affects the entire eastern Pacific Ocean. So the Galapagos Islands, life in the Galapagos is disrupted. Uh, the biggest ENSO of the last several centuries was in 1998, and there was widespread rain in Peru, rainfall in the Galapagos. Uh, penguins and seals died in the Galapagos Islands. The fisheries collapsed in Peru. Okay, so that's mostly the eastern Pacific Ocean. The western Pacific, you get this shift in rainfall from the far western end of the basin to more of the central end. Um, and that can really affect, strongly affect rainfall in places like uh, tropical Australia, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, New Guinea, in fact, during during uh, El Nino events, those regions in the far western Pacific uh, often experience drought. And if you remember back to 1998, there were actually very severe uh, fires in parts of Indonesia uh, during that and so during that El Nino event. Uh, and of course, when you have this, you you don't have this rain in places like northern Australia or or Indonesia. That can lead to widespread drought and has significant agricultural costs and. And El Nino also has an effect, or ENSO has an effect on the monsoons. During El Nino events, India tends to get much less rainfall. There's also the other end of, of the spectrum, which is called La Nina, and in that case, the normal situation of a cold eastern Pacific and a warm western Pacific is more pronounced. The convection or the deep convection, the thunderstorm activity in the western Pacific becomes much more pronounced and the ocean becomes colder during La Nina's off Peru. So that's the so-called other pole of, of ENSO.